What's up YouTube? Welcome to the video. So today we're talking about high frequency training. Now when you're doing high frequency there are a lot of considerations that you need to keep in mind. So in this video we're going to go over how to make high frequency training work for you. However, before we get into the frequency discussion, I want to make some points about my deadlift technique just because I know I'm going to get a ton of questions in the comments, so I might as well cover it preemptively. I am a round-backed puller, but if you look at where I am actually rounding, it is the upper back and not the lower back. You can usually round the upper back and there are no injury concerns. However, if you round the lower back, you're going to get messed up pretty quick, so don't round your lower back. Most disc injuries from deadlifting are going to be that L5, S1 region. For some people, if they round their upper back, they also tend to round the lower back. For me personally, I feel that if I round my upper back, I can tighten my lats a bit better and I can actually keep my lower back in a safer position. I feel like I get more leg drive. However, to deadlift in this way requires a very strong core. Not just your abs, but your overall core. So here I am doing a Palov press. This is sped up four times, which can help your core. As you can see, I'm still getting quite a good leg drive. I'm still using my quads off of the floor. If you are completely stiff-legging your deadlift, you are probably rounding your lower back. Here is the top set. This is five times 140 kilos. Now I've actually done this for 20 reps before, rest pause. And I think I've done 170 kilos for a set of five or six or something. So this is definitely not my best, but I feel like my strength is coming back. You can see I'm resetting between each rep. I'm tightening up my lats. I'm rounding the upper back, but again, not the lower back. You really want to keep the lower back in a safe position. If you ever feel your lower back rounding, then you are doing it wrong. And you probably should reduce the weight or modify your technique slightly. Then I did a back down set of 10 times 120 kilos. Again, this isn't super heavy weight. You can see it's moving a lot more quickly than before. But you know, I, I haven't been to the gym in three months. So uh, I'm not really too disappointed with this. It's sort of understandable. I was actually pretty happy with this performance and with this workout. So this was actually my sixth full body workout in a row. So I haven't taken a day off in almost a week, and every day has been hinge, squat, push, pull, press, and row, along with some arms and shoulders. A lot of people will say, oh, you're not taking a day off, you'll never recover, or you're hitting the same muscle twice in a row, how are you going to recover? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. So those of you who have been following my channel, you know that Volume, how much you are doing, how many sets per muscle group per week. Intensity, how heavy you are going. And RPE, how close to failure you are going, are all major considerations, along with the frequency, how often you are hitting each muscle group. The very obvious statement is that if your frequency is high, the other factors must be lower. If you're doing something like a bro split, and you're hitting each muscle group only once per week, your intensity can be high, your volume can be high, your RPE can be high, everything can be high because the frequency is very low. However, if you know that tomorrow you have to come back and hit the same muscle group again, those factors need to be lower, obviously. How you manipulate these variables really is crucial for your results, and yet I see them not really talked about very much. I see people with millions of followers and they never talk about volume, frequency, intensity, RPE. And this is the basic structure of your program. How can you not talk about this? It's crucial. I see people, you know, climbing a rope or doing some weird plank variation. Who cares? It doesn't matter. All right, deep breaths. Deep breaths, Jeff. Calm down, calm down. Okay, so first let's talk about volume. If you are doing high frequency, obviously your volume per session is going to be fairly low. So I would keep sets per muscle group somewhere between three and five sets per workout. I think doing one to two sets, probably not that useful, probably not that helpful, but you don't want to be doing six, seven, eight sets per muscle group as well. 
just because it's too much volume to really recover from. I realized that I only did two sets of deadlift today, but again, this is sort of an exception just because that is such a big movement and it, it is such a stimulatory exercise. If you are deadlifting or squatting, those almost count like more sets. A set of squats or a set of deadlifts, especially if it's really hard, that is not equal to a leg extension or a leg curl. In terms of intensity, how heavy you are going, I would say you should be 60 to 80% of your one rep max, at least on the exercises that have a one rep max. Something like a seated row, which you can see here, I don't have a one rep max on this. So I'm just sticking to maybe 10 to 20 reps, perhaps 25 to 30 on some sets, but mostly 10 to 20 reps per set. If you are handling very heavy weights, so like 90, 95%, 100% weights, that is going to take a lot out of you. Not necessarily from like, my CNS is burned out, my central nervous system got cooked yesterday, bro. Um, that's a myth. That doesn't exist. However, it is stressful on the joints. If you are doing a heavy bench press to the shoulders, to the elbows, it's going to take a toll, maybe even the wrists. Something like a heavy squat, the knees, the lower back. A 90 to 95% deadlift, that will take the spine at least a week to recover, just because it does place a lot of stress on the spine and on the body as a whole. Very light weights will not be very, very beneficial. So if you're using like 30 to 40% of your one rep max, just stay home and do some push-ups. You don't deserve to go to the gym. Stop training like that. It's not very effective. You want to be in that 60 to 80% of one rep max range. For your RPE, this is rating of perceived exertion. So this is essentially how close that you are going to failure. So if you go to failure, that is an RPE 10. It means you could not have gotten any more reps. If you have one rep in the tank, so to speak, that is an RPE 9. Two reps, RPE 8, and so on. So I would keep your RPE to maybe seven to nine. If you're going to failure all of the time, it's gonna take longer to recover. Even if it's a machine exercise, even if it's like an isolation exercise, you usually do not want to be going very, very close to failure. This is something that I kind of struggle with. I always have the mentality of one more rep, one more rep, one more rep. And actually it might be better for your gains, with a Z, to hold back a little bit. There have been studies that showed not going to failure can actually get you better progress. And this is particularly true if you are doing high frequency. If you know you have to do the same muscle group tomorrow, you shouldn't be having epic workouts. You just need to get in a very good, solid effort and then keep it up over multiple days. Another very important factor is your exercise selection. So if you're doing full body every single day, should you choose the same six exercises every day? No, for sure no. In fact, this actually leaves you at risk for repetitive strain injuries or repetitive stress injuries, RSIs. Essentially, if you do the same exercise every single day, it stresses the joints and the muscles and the other tissues in the exact same places. Whereas if you add in some variation, you can actually move the stress just a little bit. For example, if you're squatting, if you do high bar back squat every single day versus high bar back squat, Anderson squat, low bar back squat, heels elevated squat, goblet squat, Bulgarian split squat, lunge, those are all different variations that you can use and you are always strengthening a different area and you're spreading the stress enough to avoid injury. I guess this guy didn't see that I was working out there. Um, so I asked him very nicely to, if I could continue to work out. If you're doing something like a bro split, you don't need that much variation. Your chest day can be the same chest day every single time, just because you have a whole week to recover. And so even if you stress the joints and the muscles in the exact same way, it doesn't really matter all that much. But if you're doing, you know, the same movement pattern six or seven days per week, you had better use a pretty significant amount of variation 
Otherwise, you definitely can be you know, at risk for injury. I've also found that this is better for motivation. If you are hitting full body six or seven times per week, you better be excited about what you're doing. Otherwise, you're just not gonna go to the gym. And for me, having a variety of exercises, it really does help with motivation. Um, if I'm doing a bunch of different exercises, for me, that is exciting. For me, that is something that I like to do. Another crucial factor is your diet. So if you are doing a bro split and you have a week to recover, you don't need to focus on carbs after the workout. Your glycogen stores are just gonna be gradually restored from the whole week of eating. However, if you have only 24 hours to recover, then it becomes important to actually get in a significant amount of carbohydrate, especially if you're doing full body workouts, especially if they're 90 minutes long, two hours long. This is when nutrition really becomes crucial. So for me, I'm getting in carbs during the workout, after the workout, in the evening as well, just to make sure that my glycogen stores are full, my insulin levels are high during the workout, which helps recovery, and just to facilitate the overall muscle building process. This is not a time to be dieting. Finally, you really need to be in touch with your body. I don't mean like touching yourself. I mean, you need to be in tune with how you feel. It might take longer to warm up. You might feel a little, little bit achy. Your joints might not feel 100%. And it's important to really go with the flow and be ready to modify any movements based on how you feel. And this goes with your volume, with your intensity, with your exercise selection, with any of these factors, you need to be able to train instinctively to get the most out of high frequency training. That is it for today. Make sure to like the video if you like the video. If you did not like the video, you can dislike the video. Actually, that helps the algorithm as well. Subscribe and I will see you next time. Peace.